Hello everybody, welcome to The Wonky Angle, where I talk about electronic music, both new and old. And today I'm talking about the new album from The Black Dog, My Brutal Life. Damn, three Black Dog albums in the same year. <laughs> I've covered this Sheffield Techno Trio frequently enough where I don't feel like I need to introduce them, look up any of the previous six videos I've done on them in the past if you're curious. I got the most recent three linked in the description. Uh, for a quick recap on their especially active 2023, back in February they released an album called Music for Airport Lounges to add on to the legacy of their 2010 ambient classic Music for Real Airports, which was seeing a repress. Uh, I thought uh, that album effectively pulled off what it set out to do, uh, even if I obviously don't think it matched how deep the original it was adding on to could go. In May, they released the Grey album, which feels like it was designed to be the real big event for them this year, uh, that returned to their straightforward darkwave techno sound that went for a deliberately unpolished approach as a tribute to their fellow Sheffield influences, especially the Human League in Heaven 17. Nearly half the tracks on that thing had, like, titles which made direct references to those bands in particular. Now, I really wanted to love that album, given how excited the band themselves were about it and how much fun they clearly had putting it together, though I don't know if it got all the way there for me on a personal level, and it's also kind of shrunk on me since I put up my video on it. The flatter and more claustrophobic production style could make a bunch of moments drag more than they needed to, and it's a pretty unpleasant downer of a listen, which was kind of the point. Uh, but they've also made unpleasant downers in the past that I found a lot more replayable and didn't wear out on me in the same way. I'd still call it a good album, though. There's more than enough high points scattered throughout that are still able to turn that flatter, unpolished, early 80s aesthetic into something pretty fun and energetic, especially near the end. There's enough quality there to still make it worth hearing. It's just less of a favorite in recent memory than it was when it first came out. Also, not even to get into the handful of companion EPs they've dropped to add on to either of those albums, or the represses they did for their classic albums Bites and Spanners from way back in the early mid-90s when the guys from Plaid were still a part of the band. But now they already have a third new full-on studio album, only like half a year after the last one, their 18th overall by my count. Advertised as focusing on the more human aspects of brutalism and the aesthetic of that architectural style which they've focused on in many other projects they've put out, especially over the last couple of years. Also acting as the soundtrack to a photography exhibition. Ordinarily I might find the quick turnaround time for this album to not be a promising sign, but as I've been sitting with My Brutal Life for the past week or so, it's set itself apart as not just easily my favorite project they've put out this year, but I think their actual strongest work since Neither Neither in 2015. And I know I said that about the Grey album in my review when that came out, but that felt like it was barely holding that position, like it could be overtaken by other projects of theirs like music for photographers depending on my mood, which at this point it kinda has. But this album is actually closer to being on par with Neither Neither, or at least for their vexations. It's legit great. Those two albums might have higher high points with more striking melodies, but this album beats them out in terms of its atmosphere building as well as beating out the former in terms of its flow and cohesion. It feels like they took all the best elements of their past several albums with none of those project's weaknesses and combined them together in this single tight package. Right from when this project starts with opener It's Not Enough, the tone and mood is perfectly set with all those light percussion thumps and taps and all the brooding but chilling pads surrounding the mix like a cold wind blowing through an empty concrete building. And it blends perfectly into the straight ambience of the title track, which sounds like it's made out of synth choirs and feels really big and expansive but really emotionally harrowing. The kind of ambience that would fit perfectly with, like, Thump Monk soundtrack to the Submachine series, and I mean that is the highest possible compliment. I think that's probably my favorite track in the bunch. But I don't feel like there's a noticeable dip in terms of the quality from that point onwards either. Uh, the Mundane continues the minimal ambient approach with a much more stripped back mix with all these pads that sort of resemble organs coming and going. It doesn't convey the same sense of space, but ends up hitting on a solid emotional note anyway, perhaps feeling more intimate and introspective. Next we move into Beyond the Estate Agents window, which brings the techno beats back in for something with a bit more bite. It may not be much more than a bunch of thumping kick textures tapping and echoing over some harsh but spacious ambient pads, but there is definitely some subtle forcefulness to its deeper rhythms. Also like the field recordings in the background of this one where you can hear like a police car, fire engine, siren way in the distance. 
Then we return to the ambient subspaces on Unité de Habitation, possibly the most comforting and positive sounding track in the bunch with its very simple whistling pads going over some extremely simple half percussive half melodic plucks acting as an underlying rhythm. Definitely one of the most consistently striking moments here. Followed by another return back to subtle minimal techno in Asymmetrical Living, which takes all these thumping and echoing kicks that sound like they carry directly out of the rhythms of the previous track, but replaces the melodies with what sound like filtered and stretched field recordings, even building some other more minimal glitchy percussion on top in its second half. Then there's another one of the most consistently striking cuts in Postcards for Comfort, which is most characterized by these soft chord stabs that repeat throughout, but also build up some pretty nice minimal techno beats and IDM flavor glitches on top, turning what would have been a solid ambient moment into one of the more driving rhythmic moments on display here. There's also a cool effect with this track where, depending on which part of the track, I'm either feeling like a bit of a swung triplet focus beat, like a or a more steady pattern of 16th notes, and it kind of floats between those. Hey Sari kind of hits on a similar dark but oddly comforting note, but building itself out of different ingredients, including much more present airy melodies floating over its humming pads and more tactile set of percussion patterns. And then we get two more straight ambient drone cuts, which again have a very cold and windy affect to them. Uh, Dropping Well Futures is definitely my favorite of those two, since uh, the drones have more melody and feel like they have more of a satisfyingly filled out mix. Again, feeling very spacious and open. But Concrete Slit carries out of that track's idea in an interesting way by letting its pads get a lot eerier and feel a, mo a lot more empty and isolated through a more dissonant and unresolved feeling sustained chord that takes out all the bass. Although that bass does slowly fade in over the course of the track, which uh, makes everything feel significantly more foreboding and menacing. But then it's finally time to return to the techno beats on Future Townscapes, which doesn't really deliver a new twist on the sound that earlier tracks couldn't, but the way it's slowly thumping bass heavy kicks go up next to all the reverb cover glitch effects is plenty satisfying, effectively keeps up the subtle momentum the album's had going. And then we semi-abruptly cut into Minimal Reconstruction, uh, which is somewhere between being straight ambient and beat driven. It features some interestingly more heartfelt major key pads blowing away in the background, but also there's a lot of low-key glitchy percussion textures tapping away, albeit in a much more formless and abstract manner than any other cut here, and there's some kind of like harsher buzzing effects that fade in and out in various parts. That's definitely one of the more unique ideas on display here. Next up, there's Villa Goth Calling, another straight ambient piece made of nothing but dark melodic droning pads. There's a little bit more of like a regular chord progression formed by this one that makes it feel markedly more structured than previous drone tracks on the album in spite of its, you know, lack of beats and slow movement. Another one of the more foreboding cuts on display here. And that leads pretty directly into the functional closer Beton Brute, uh, which ends up as the most straightforward techno cut on display here with some eerie lead melodies that have a bit of a squelchy 90s acidish texture to them, almost acting as like a sort of credits roll kind of moment for the album as a whole. I really like the pads that fade in through the second half as well to make the track feel more fleshed out and like something that could have shown up on an album like Neither Neither. Also, the trade-off between this track and the one right before it remind me a lot of the trade-off between the first two tracks on the Grey album, which was one of the better parts of that project. I think it's fair to say I like these tracks a little more. But since the end of Beton Brew would probably feel a bit too abrupt if it acted as the actual closer, uh, there's a 51 second outro called Con tacked on at the end, made out of much fuzzier and darker ambience with all these garbled voices in the background. Reminds me of one of their Bolt or Phil interlude tracks, but in this context feels like it's acting almost like a to-be-continued post-credits teaser or something. And that's everything on my brutal life. I mean, the Black Dog may have already proven time and time again that they can nail these blends of minimal techno and ambience. This may not reveal anything new about them that they haven't already demonstrated the capability to do before. But this just happens to be the most immersive and immediate blend of the sounds they've delivered in a long time. The ambience is super enveloping and chilling and perfectly evokes all the concrete buildings that have continually acted as their inspiration. The techno elements provide the album with more of a sense of stakes and forward momentum, further fleshing the album out while frequently calling back to their more tactile IDM roots more than they have in a while. The album flows super well, and the continuous mix is one of their tightest and most well constructed in a minute. And the album seems to make those 48 minutes zip by as if it were nothing. This ends up hitting in a similar way that maybe some, like, modern-day Ultimate Records projects can, such as Ace Dana's A Period. 
It may have a very isolated and lonely sound to it and get typically foreboding in many parts as you would obviously expect, but the listening experience is interestingly refreshing and very easy for me to sink myself into. There's always that clear human connection as they went out of their way to highlight this time around. And yeah, I mean, I don't really have much else to say. This is, once again, one of their strongest efforts in years. I can possibly even see it uh, ending up sitting among some of my favorites of the year. If you're in the mood for some minimal ambient techno, this is absolutely worth going out of your way to pick up. And I'm overall feeling an 8.3 out of 10 on it. But of course, this is just my opinion. You can feel free to disagree with it, but I'd like to hear your thoughts, so leave the comments in the comment thing down there. Shout out to my Patreon supporters, they're awesome people. You want to add yourself that list, link to my Patreon is in the description. But yeah, that's pretty much it. That's all for today. See you next time.